Schultz and, you know, in Manhattan. And um, it was a thing I started doing really because I just, I was about 20 when I realized life wasn't a musical and things were, you know, the song wasn't going to come on and everything's okay and, you know. But, um, you know, a lot of my friends were doing Broadway shows. I had always done theater. I did quite a bit of theater at Sarah Lawrence College where I went. So theater was just always a big part of, you know, my acting and, and how I was sort of trained. So um, television just sort of emerged because that was a sort of the thing at hand to do. Um, and then film, and then it was sort of nice to be asked to go back to it, which I was asked uh, with vagina monologues, and then to do Chicago. So I don't really feel like I'm transitioning. I just feel like it's sort of another opportunity to um, to do what I do. And uh, Sheldon and I sort of came into, or he came into my life at a time when I was really ready to focus on acting again. And um, and this is what was here. I think if he'd been doing anything, I would have said yes to it. You know. <laughs> and we 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 worked together doing uh, the pilot for a sitcom that's now on BET called Read Between the Lines, and Robin was the guest star. And actually, when you do a sitcom, it's very much like doing a play. Mm -hmm. uh, you really rehearse it the same way you rehearse a play, and. You do it as if you're doing it in front of an audience. And sometimes there's an audience there, and sometimes there's not. But that was where I said, hmm, I think Robin could do this role. I think she's really perfect for her. And mm. She tells a story I kept staring at. Yeah. She gave these strange <laughs> looks. And it was really because I was thinking about her being Angel, the character in the play. That's so funny not yeah. to have known that. You know? <laughs> and I didn't tell her. Yeah, yes, can you? So, uh, Robert Manning, who plays yeah. Leland, Tessa Thompson, who plays Delia. Kevin Carroll, who plays Guy, Robin you've met, and Mr. Kadeem Hardison, who I plays ask Sam. Which one you want to answer. What attracted you to the role, and once you kind of got into the role, is there anything in the character that associates with your own character? Good question. Yeah, you have to start with Tessa. Yeah, <laughs> right now, my lord. Um, I think I was just first attracted to the, the world of the play and, and what it occupies. I've spent a lot of time in Harlem myself, obviously Harlem now, and um, I think it's a fascinating place. I just love being on 125th Street, and so, mm -hmm. and I love the 30s. I'm so into the music of the 30s and I'm obsessed with Billie Holiday and what the Harlem Renaissance meant for who we are now as people. So. I think I was first really taken by the world, um, and the world, and then, and then all of the characters. I think they're such well-drawn people that all um, undergo such growth in the play, and especially Delia, who I play. Um, I think she begins the play with one set of, of morals and a, a compass which she follows really strictly, and then it gets unraveled in a way that's really beautiful and sometimes sad and and so I think any character that you get to play that actually is unlike yourself, I, I don't think I'm very much like her. Um, well, I've become more like her. <laughs> She's made me far more tidy <laughs> and aware of things that generally I don't care. Like, uh, anyways. All right. I just heard something. And sensitive to when people tease me, which is something she's sensitive to. Again. And now uh, they all tease me. But um, anyways, yeah, I think I think it's a it's a beautiful play that really speaks to the period and also uh, is just so relevant now as well. So I was first taken by it and then and then continued to be taken by Delia. Now I've got mine this week. Come on, <laughs> come on, it's half. I read half the play, and it's it's uh, it's because Sheldon asked because I got a, a letter from my agent saying, <laughs> Pasadena Playhouse, Sheldon Epps. I said okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. compliments. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, yeah, it nice. wasn't it wasn't about the play. I didn't read the play until I got to the stage. With that. <laughs> and after you got into the play and pulling that character, how did you how did you channel that character? Uh, I'm still working on it. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I just kind of. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a, I, you know, it's a pleasure to uh, be able to bring a sense of ebony elegance to the stage. It's it's something that I don't think that we are 
uh, necessarily getting um, in huge doses in the present day, um, but to spend some time being reminded of where we come from, the Harlem Renaissance, and what it means is uh, it's a great opportunity and a wonderful it's a wonderful era to uh, you know it's amazing to look at in one hand to yeah. see the elegance that sort of uh, that we've that we're putting on stage but what's really below it is the resiliency of our spirit as African Americans and mm -hmm. the things that we're going through to come to we, you can dress it up any kind of way you want to but somewhere underneath at the root of it is our belief, our love for each other, our faith mm -hmm. in dreams. Like, what a great way to hang elegance on such, uh, on the root of who we are and how we've able, been able to sus sustain as a people to get where we are. Mm -hmm. And to do it ele elegantly mm -hmm. is sort of a cherry on top, but it's the root of who we are in this play that we see working that I'm, I'm really thrilled about and it's well people don't know but LA has more theaters than any place else in the country right? people don't know that so what I, the, what I wanted uh, each of you to discuss is considering the thought that LA is not where you come you know to hear, to hear or see good fear how important is it to have a place such as this right here pretty much in Pasadena and having this opportunity to do such a piece well it, it, it gives the lie to that belief the fact, the fact that we are doing this brilliant play with these wonderful actors in a world-class production, I would say, as good a production as you can see of this play anywhere, says, you all can't say that anymore. Whoever you are, you can't say that anymore. And not only is it happening at this theater, there are many, many other theaters in L.A. that will be having performances tonight, as many as London. <laughs> Yes. What are. overall message do you hope this play conveys to the audience? Well, you know, <laughs> I think that's tough. We're all going, we're, we're all silenced. Uh, seems like I interrupted something. Uh, we're all silenced, not because we don't have an answer. The, the beauty of Pearl's writing is there's so many things to take out of this life. So many things. Survival, as I talked about before, responsibility for your choices, um, believe in your dream, community. There's just so there's so many rich aspects to it, which is what I think makes it fascinating and important to do it. So it's hard to say. It's hard for me to say which one is the most important. And I think depending on who you are, the the audience member, and what's important to you, a different person in the play is your hero or the person that you relate. With. Mm -hmm. So I think it's hard to, to me it's the most fascinating thing about this play. I really like plays and pieces of work and literature that ask questions as opposed to answer them. You know? mm -hmm. And I think that, that this play does it, particularly by the end. I think you would be doing a disservice by, uh, to the expansiveness of the writing to want to leave people with one thing. You know, I think it's much more thrilling and true to this journey to say how many questions were you able to rethink mm. about your life because you've seen this play tonight. Mm. And you know, have, we had a young lady out last night and I, she stopped a couple of us and I mean she went off, she went on a rip <laughs> and went for like 15 minutes, uh, you know, non-stop just about how galvanized she was about revisiting the place. She had seen it in New York and then came to see it here. And apparently, you know, production had cut a lot of things out and she learned so many more things. Like Angel, in the production she had seen, uh, was cut out of the last scene, uh, so she never said the goodbyes. And was, so, I mean, she was, all, she was all in a bunch because she had learned so much more seeing the play or revisiting the world than she had previously, and mm. I thought that was great. <laughs> On the 27th, I'll be like, <laughs> you are. Robin, did you have to do research to prepare for your character? Well, um, I don't know how much research I actually did. I certainly spent some time with her and 
you know, I sort of, um, I didn't actually step away from the material at hand. Um, it's interesting how, how you can read something initially and you think you know the character and you go, okay, hmm. And the more we discuss, our, our, I think our, our rehearsal process, which we first did just around the table, which was a lot of discussion. And Sheldon's pretty interesting to work with. He really lets you have this sort of free reign. I always say, but I notice he knows where he wants you to go and every, mm. occasionally he'll just nudge in the area. <laughs> he knows where you're, the destination is that you will end up getting there. If you don't get there quick enough, okay. You know. <laughs> But, um, but I think we had a lot of discussions about who she is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think actually, in terms of her history and all that's happened to her and made her, who we see, um, when we see her at a certain point in time, is all right there. Where she worked at Miss Lily's and what she did there, how she would have been affected by it. Um, so we spent quite a bit of time sort of examining that. But I think we all also, we, we found some wonderful books about Harlem yes, yes, during yes. that period, mm -hmm. and uh, pictorial mm -hmm. references, mm -hmm. and everybody spent a lot of time really studying mm -hmm. photographs mm -hmm. from that period, just to really sort of immerse ourselves in the style, the look. That world. Yeah. And, and that was very yeah, helpful. That, it yeah. really was. And what actually I found happened, well, this is the first time we're really talking about this, actually. Mm -hmm. this is like, but you, you could be in that world, and we'd rehearse for hours, and, and you'd come out and realize, <gasps> you know, you're now in the present time. I mean, you really did feel like you were mm -hmm. back in this time. It's really. And then when you get to the costumes and everything, and yes. the hair and everything sort of layered and added on, right. it's really. Thank you.